Hi everyone, this is Kelly and I have recently did a walkthrough of the Herb Crafters Tarot and so I'm continuing to be absolutely thrilled with this but you know we'll come back to another come back to that another time. But uh, because I had just done the walkthrough of this, I kind of wanted to uh, give you a look into my herb crafter practice um, and some ways in which I've recently gotten organized and some of the books uh, that I would recommend and some herbs maybe to start working with that I would recommend that kind of thing because people have asked me about that for a long time. And this seemed to be a good opportunity to do so. Um, one of the things that I do want to point up, out up front is that I actually do not see a difference, or let's say I don't see a divergence between a mystical, magical working path and a medicinal health, a whole body um, life path, right? I don't see those two things as being separate. Uh, I don't see spiritual and mundane as being separate. I see those things as being intertwined and interlocking. So you're going to see a mix of those things in books, uh, also in the way that I catalog things. Um, I don't uh, separate those two things uh, I, in practice or obviously in, in this type of thing. Um, I think that we sometimes um, need to have things neatly labeled and so we often have this is our spiritual path or this is our practicing path or our working path or our magical path and this is our mundane life, this is just the living path and this is where we take our aspirin and our Tylenol and, and all of that kind of stuff and over here we're doing a, a magic in, you know, intention setting for prosperity and these two things are something that are separate paths, separate labels, separate paths. And I, I do think that we do ourselves a disservice um, with that thinking. It's very natural thinking in some ways, but I don't think that should ever be the way that we think. It's that whole, you know, living our life on uh, the weekdays and going to church on Sundays, right? Just having that sort of separation there, which I just don't think is healthy, and I don't think it's the way that the world works, right? Um, so for me, the mundane path, the medicinal path, the health path, the work and life and going to the grocery store path um, is not separate from the spiritual practice path. Those two things interlocked and that when we're going to the grocery store we can see a set of colors or cans on the on the grocery store um, shelves and get an oracle message. We can be walking our dog um, and see flowers set in a certain configuration and that um, can be an oracle um, our, the herbs and the things that we use can serve both spiritual practice and health benefits at the same time and that the, the, they just help to bolster the energy of both of those things. So that's one of the things that I definitely wanted to point out. I'll put a picture up here of my working space and so it's not huge I don't have a big apartment so I've had to really segregate off these are the areas this is the art area this is where I sit down at the desk and do my work this is my reading table uh, and so on and so forth that's just the way it goes when you have a small space but I love it and it works really well for me and one of the things that you would notice is that uh, my health things, so the vitamins that I take, uh, the herbs and, you know, bottles that I would take, like vitamin C or something like that, the stuff that I take for my sinuses, uh, is all in the same area as where I would be, um, doing intention setting or anything of that nature or burning for, uh, a specific working or something. And to me, those two things should intermingle and, um, they only increase the, um, effectiveness of both in my opinion, um, as well as be that constant reminder that it is all one, you know, we all have this one life that we're living um, and having that integrated, I think, is a powerful experience. So I just wanted to point that out because you're going to obviously see that even um, in the video. 
Okay, so last thing that I do want to say is those qualifications that we all have to say before doing a video, especially when we're doing a video that has to do with herbs and things like that. And I am not going to be talking about what different herbs do, both in a workings, practicing kind of way, uh, really, or in a medicinal way, uh, because I believe that every person needs to be responsible for what they work with, uh, whether that is on a physical or a workings um crafting sense. And so um, I am not a what I would consider to be a herbalist. I have taken classes. I am taking a class. I um, have, but mostly I've just worked with herbs um, and essential oils and things like that for as, as long as I can remember. My mom was always somebody that was into um, natural health, right? from the youngest age, like she was growing sprouts on, <laughs> making her own peanut butter, growing sprouts on screens, and uh, she was using herbs. We were much more likely to go to the health food store and talk to the herbalist at the uh, health food store. Uh, if there was something, or somebody was sick or there's something wrong with us, then we were going to go to a doctor. I only remember going to an actual doctor a couple times as a child. I remember stepping on a whole board of nail, rusty nails, and I do remember going and getting a tetanus shot. Um, so it, it's not like the, that she didn't provide a basic health care, but for most things we were more likely to, and this is from the, the youngest age that I can remember, um, that we were more likely, if we got burned, she was not going to go to the pharmacy. She had a huge aloe plant um, that she would pull open, you know, snip off and pull open and slather it on our burns. Um, yeah, it, that's just how she was. She was more likely to take me to a health food store um, and talk to the herbalist there uh, about, and that, that goes all the way through even into my adulthood. If there was things that were going on, okay, let's go to this particular person that she really trusted and let's talk to them in terms of a natural sense and what we can do here. So that has been my entire life experience has been working with um, natural medicines, whole medicines. And so, um, so for me, it's a lot of it is, is just experience of having used these things for a very long time. Uh, but I am also a Libra, very logical minded person. And I also don't willy nilly put things on my skin, put things in my body, um, you know, work with things without having done a lot of research on them. Now, in the United States, you can actually work with uh, doctors who are trained physicians. Uh, I believe they're called DDOs here, um, where they have a, a, a regular doctor's degree, and yet they are more inclined to working with uh, natural medicine as well. So it's a, there's a nice little blend of those two. My doctor for the longest time um, was you know his first step was always whole medicine and, and herbs and um, vitamins and things of that nature he was always going to start there before he went to some of the more traditional western pharmaceutical type of uh, reactions so again my experience both with my mother even with my primary doctor for years was that sort of blend there not even a blend it was mostly towards the natural path is what i would call it so so there isn't any sort of, but but my point is, I'm sorry, I, I, this is going to be very hard to stay on topic because there's just so much here. I'm going to try to keep really focused. My point is, is that the purpose of this video is not to advise you on health or herbs or essential oils or anything of that nature. If it's something that you are interested in, you need to do the legwork. If you are going to roll something onto your skin, which absorbs or put it underneath your tongue or ingest it, um, you 
do need to do the work to figure out uh, if that is good for your body and your particular situation. Talk to a physician if you can. Talk to a local herbalist. Um, some people have actual herbal stores. Uh, here you often find those in health food stores have herbalists on uh, the payroll that you can talk to. Um, go to doctors, you know, do your research, all of that stuff. Um, even with doctors, I, I will say the same thing for pharmaceutical medicine. We should not be putting something into our bodies, onto our bodies, ingesting it, whatever. We shouldn't be doing that without gaining knowledge first. So, you know, that that's plain and simple. What works for me um, is not necessarily going to work for you. What works perfectly fine and I'm comfortable with, you could put on your skin and it might be uncomfortable. What you can slather all over your skin might actually irritate my skin, right? We're all different human beings and we should take the time to, to know that. Um, so, there's my qualifications. I know it's just, it's necessary. And especially when you're talking about things that can be put on skin or ingested. But I will say that um, you can work with these things in a variety of ways, which we're going to talk about. And that doesn't include ingesting um, or putting it on your skin. So there's a lot of different ways to uh, work with herbs and oils and things of that nature. And so we're going to talk a little bit about that as well. Um, if you have followed my channel for very long, you know, A, because I have a very small space, I do try to keep my reference books down to a small a number. So I have a lot of divinatory systems that I enjoy, uh, topics or things of that nature that I enjoy working with, and I really try to keep my reference books down to a manageable size for a small space. One, for the space, but two, also because there is a ton of books out there. Um, if you, a tarot, there's a ton of books out there. If you're in a geomancy, there's not a ton, but I do have all of them. That's There's some things that I have exceptions on. Um, if you're into runes, there's a lot of books on runes. Um, if you're into herbs and natural healing and all of that kind of, there's tons of books, right? And so my goal as trying to keep my space in control and also because it can start to get really confusing uh, if you read 12 things about the same topic, right? Um, you start to get a lot of contradicting information. It starts to get really overwhelming. So picking a couple sources that you've experienced and feel, okay, feel really good about these or you've had great recommendations and sticking with a few of those, I, I just can't recommend it enough. It doesn't mean that you can't have a whole library of books if you have the space to do so. But find those few that you're like, okay, this is going to be sort of my ground zero of where I'm going to start from um, and kind of fall back to because it can be really helpful. So this, uh, what I'm going to show you is just... Um, there's a reason why I've kept each one of these particular books and what I like about them. It is not an exhaustive book <laughs> list of books that I've read um, or, or would recommend either. So um, Kelly Bear has recently been putting up, I think, a couple videos on her on her books on herbalism that she enjoys. So I will put a link to the to her channel below uh, because we uh, both kind of coincided on that, and so I will put a link. Um, to her things below. She has some ones, I, she has a tea one that I'm um, going to order actually today because that is something different than what I already have. Uh, so, okay. Oh, so I guess let's just, I guess I'll try to clear a table so that way. So I'll start with the books and why these particular books I'm going to point out and then we'll kind of keep moving. Um, this is a book called Essential Oils Natural Remedies by Althea Press. So it doesn't seem, I don't know if it's by a specific person. It's more of an overview. There are lots of books on essential oils. I don't rely just, you know, we have a vast and wonderful internet, but let me also, you know, qualify that everything that you read on the internet is not going to be true. And everything that you read on the internet is not going to be good medical advice, right? So, you, but you, 
should be reading with uh, things on the internet with a critical eye. Where is the source? Where is this coming from? Is the same information kind of showing up in several reliable places, right? So I do go to the internet a lot, um, and I'm just really careful about uh, weeding out uh, or weeding into uh, information that makes sense to me, that maybe coincides with things that I already know, or is from a reliable source, these types of things. So there's a vast internet out there that can is, is amazing in the information that we can gain but you do have to obviously be careful so um, so it, and there's a ton of books on essential oils tons of books I just happened to pick this one up because I liked the way that it was set up um, and I have found it to be very helpful so it's the one that I kept but then again I go to a lot of different sources at also my mom is an amazing source I have an aunt who if she wasn't if she didn't call herself a uh, um, if she didn't call herself a Christian and couldn't label it that she's basically a hedge witch but she wouldn't acknowledge that um, so I have other resources, also my local, I do have a really great local health store that has some great people that are working there and herbalists and things of that nature. So I have, you know, a variety of different ways in which I go about it, but I do keep this book um, and I really enjoy this. Um, I What I love about this is that you can even see on the side, well, I don't know if you can in the camera, but they're even colored on the side. So there's a whole section that you can look it up just by the oil. Um, itself get the information get what can be blend it can blend well with get the precautions you need there are things that you need to be careful of certain oils are phototoxic so if you put it on your arm then you don't want to be out in the sun for sometimes 12 to 24 hours uh, some things pregnant people shouldn't be doing I've actually found a lot of herbs because my jo my, my Joanna <laughs> my sister is she is my Joanna but my sister is um, has an estrogen dependent cancer and so there are herbs like some really ones that I use a lot that she should not be or oils anyways that she should not be using because of that what they how they can interact with her body um, and so you know knowing the precautions are really important uh, before you put it on yourself and certainly before you were to recommend it to somebody else so it gives you precautions um, and then it gives you a listing of the property the medical properties and ways in which you might use it so it goes that way but then it also goes the other way so if you're having a nosebleed so this whole section is if you're having back pain or if you've got a bee sting or if there's a, you have a boil or you have a cough or a cold um, what are some recipes that you might be able to try and I may not follow the exact recipe but say the skin soothing for a heat rash okay well I know I ha always have eucalyptus and always have lavender um, maybe I don't have any baking soda but I'll still um, kind of um, mix it up into coconut oil and use that so I can see what's being used in the recipes and, and kind of modify that again I've used essential oils for a really long time um, so I can kind of take what I know and then take what's there and kind of concoct something right but I like that it gives you both symptom based and then looking up the direct herb and then even in the index there's an ailments index so and an oils index so that if you're looking for a specific oil versus a specific ailment you can do things so this is something that I look for in books that they are really well organized like that um, and so this to me is a very handy reference to have it also talks about different ways to make compresses and different ways to diffuse it you know if you're not used to working with uh, essential oils um, and so there's a lot of information at the front but you know, for me the big part was were these two sections there uh, and I don't think I have um, I might have a couple of oils that are not here but there's not very many of them it's a pretty good listing of them for just sort of basic it getting you in the gate so um, I the reason I keep this book is for essential oils uh, which is something I use 
probably more than, or in a health sense, I use oils probably more than I use loose leaf herbs. Um, I'm working with using more teas and things like that um, to, in, to, to ingest herbal uh, things more often. Um, and I do take vitamins and supplements and things like that. So I do take echinacea pills and I do make uh, elderberry tinctures and things like that. So it's not that I don't, but I probably start with oil. I do really love essential oils, so I tend to start there first. So that's this one. This is also about essential oils. I really love this book. This says it's called Blackthorn's Botanical Magic. And this is um, The Green Witch's Guide to Essential Oil Spellcraft Ritual and Healing by Amy Blackthorn. Um, she is the founder of Blackthorn Hoodoo Blends. So this is focused on essential oils as well. But um, as you can imagine, um, this is a little bit more to the... Um, um, magic, self-improvement, um, spiritual health, uh, kind of, you know, these things cross boundaries, like say a tension tamer, bath oil. Um, yes, that can be something that is great for your spiritual and your emotional well-being, but it can also be physically good for you to release tension and things of that nature. So a good um, understanding of herbs, natural naturopathy, I guess is how you would say that, is that again, that understanding that those things, those lines, they cross over and they should cross over. Um, but I really love for this one is the, that she focuses or she gives a lot of great information about the aromatherapy part of things. Because when you're working with essential oils, there's all different components. I have a diffuser that's going almost all of the time. Um, I have a dis small diffusers, diffusers here, diffusers there, diffusers everywhere. So diffusing is, is really scent-based um, versus putting it into a roller ball and rolling it onto your skin and absorbing it um, or that type of thing. So there's different ways that you use it. But what I really love about hers is, is that she talks about um, how the scent impact is, how that initial hit of just smelling it and what that can promote. So I love that. She does a really good job with giving the name, the scientific name, where um, sort of some information about it in a more scientific way, uh, the botanical family, the origin, what is the source that you're using, the notes, this is important for me, I use this a lot in essential oils, the description of the scent and what that impact of smelling it would be. Then she gives you the magical correspondences such as the elements, the days of the weeks, crystals, planets, the uses for in a magical sense. And then she gives you the herbal lore, which is something I'll talk a little bit more about in a, at the end. But she gives you some of the herbal lore. She uh, gives you some uses for that. And then she gives you some recipes for that particular oil. So I think this is a really fantastic uh, book to, and, and you've got this little sketch of it as well. Um, so I really, I kind of was, you know, I wasn't entirely sure. I was like, okay, because, you know, there's a lot of books out there that are really gorgeous. Like, this is a gorgeous book. Um, they look really appealing on the shelf. There's a ton of them. And so I really do approach a lot of the books coming out with a little bit of skepticism, as I think we always should, right? Um, because I think that sometimes it could be a lot less helpful than it looks like on the outside but I do really like this um, I like how she has it set up I like the information that she gives I find that the correspondences match with say um, Cunningham Ham's Encyclopedia of Magical Herb correspondences but then also gives you more um, than what you get there I love again that she gives the um, recipes and things of that nature now the only thing that I would say about this one for me that's negative is in terms of the setup. Um, I don't, in this type of um, all herbal books, like I want to see a list of the herbs. So it does tell you starting on page 49 are the essential oils from A to Z. So we can obviously go to 49 and that's where it starts. But you can't easily, it's, alphabet, it's alphabetical, which is great, but there's not a listing here of the actual individual um, 
herbs to then just go directly to lavender or go directly to cinnamon or something like that. And I do think that is a, a, a slip up here. Now, maybe someplace else, no magic wand. Her introduction is fantastic. Um, I love when I use candle magic and I love when she talks about like people do that without even thinking about it when you, you know, make a wish at a birthday cake. And yeah, it's just great introduction. Um, so, yeah, so my downside to this is just the fact that, again, there's not a, now we do have an appendix here of like phototoxic ones, which is great. Like you need to know whether a particular plant is a phototoxic or not. And what's interesting is that she even breaks it down because sometimes it's non-phototoxic when it's distilled, but when it's expressed, it is phototoxic. So knowing which version you have um, and giving that list. So I think that's fantastic. A listing of oils to avoid during pregnancy, um, how to test for quality and purity. So she also gives some of that real um, basic things. She also gives a um, resource list. She also gives gives botanical terms that are more related to magic uh, as well. Um, and then she has an index of recipes so that if you are looking for a recipe to um, promote peace, here's a bunch of them uh, where you can uh, find them um, and which, but again, there's not the page number. So I, let's say I want to do this deep breath recipe. Well, it's in the uh, re listing for lemon, but it doesn't give you the page number. So it's just that one step more, I think would make this much more easier as a reference book. Cause that's what this is, is a reference book. And so, um, and then of course a great bibliography. So um, these were a listing of my essential oils and whether they were in the book or not, I don't think I have some of the newer ones uh, here as well. Just letting me know of my herbs that I use, or essential oils that I use a lot, which ones are covered in this book. So I was actually really pleased with this and it is definitely, again, on the magic side of things, the intention. You know, this idea of magic for me, again, I don't think, um, I don't see a separation between the physical world and the magical world. So um, the term magic, I go back and forth on. For me, it's practice, it's, it's doing practice, it's doing energy work, it's uh, workings, I guess, is something that I would say more than doing magicking, <laughs> which isn't a word. Um, but you will find if you're looking for setting intentions or uh, doing any kind of energetic or herbal workings, you're going to find it often in those kinds of sections that are talking about uh, the craft. Um, and so... Um, but, but again, just always for me, keeping in mind, I don't see a uh, separation between this and the health benefits, right? So if I'm doing a particular health remedy, those magical properties or those energetic, I guess for me would be, those energetic properties are there as well. So if I'm rubbing lavender on a burn, I'm doing a medical, um, I'm doing something medically and health wise for myself, but the um, energy energetic properties are also in play and going to help in that circumstance as well. There's not a separation that that herb says, okay, I'm now doing health work. I'm not doing any whole body or energetic working, right? Um, so you get the benefit of both and vice versa. Uh, and so, so yeah, I know I'm, I'm kind of beating that over the head but so I really so this again both of these are essential oil based um, but this is obviously focusing more on the health and this is more uh, on the energetic practice work um, and I think these are great to have um, I do have Cunningham's Encyclopedia of Magical Herbs because I just feel like if you're looking for magical correspondences or energetic correspondences it's kind of just something everybody should have um, but um, so he, I mostly just use this for straight up. A, I do like that there are the, uh, again, the black and white sketches of most of them, not all of them, but most of them. Um, so it's funny that I have spider wart here because I just did a flower essence for spider wart. So it gives you a folk name. It gives you the power, the magical uses. And then if there is, he also gives you the, the gender, the planets, the elements, and the powers. Now, the only thing that I will say, you know, this obviously can be the time 
period that this was created in. This could also be um, that a lot of these are folk based and so they kind of reference the same sort of things. But a lot of times for me, the uses here are very repetitive. Like everything is for protection. Everything is for pur purification. Every Not everything, but it does feel a little bit repetitive in the uses. Um, but remember that when we're looking for energetic um, uses, looking at the physical health benefits gives you the key to um, thinking about how could you then use that if you're setting intention or you're doing a working, right? The, the medical sort of um, health aspect of properties of the plant can then directly translate into how you would, so if something is a, a barrier, right? If something forms a barrier in a health sense, then using that in an intention setting to um, set the intention for putting up protection barriers makes sense. Does that, does that make sense? So um, you can find intent uses for workings by knowing and understanding the health or physical properties of that particular herb or plant or oil. Hopefully that makes sense. So I, I keep this because I do um, like to try to grab, especially the um, correspondences, and I like to have lists of the folk names. Um, and then I always take the um, magical uses. I do, do look at it, but I also then look to the actual plant uh, properties to, to really hone in that. So that's just, I feel like something, if you're doing any kind of herb crafting, you just it's like one of those books everybody should have. And then the last one that I have here is Secret Medicines from Your Garden by Ellen Everett Hopman. I really love this book because I think what this book does is exactly what I've been trying to kind of reiterate um, in terms of it doesn't separate um, energetic work from health work, from walking in the woods, from living our lives. And so there are amazing sections on um, observing all of the different ways that you can observe a plant and what that might tell you about the plant. Um, but she, but she's really good about because this idea of signatures um, is something that if you do any studying on um, herb craft, you know that it, there was a long period of time in which um, the medical properties of plants were dis devised or decided on based on the what you're looking at, the different aspects of the plant. So it's called the doctrine of signatures. Now, obviously, we can figure out a lot of ways in which plants can be used and the properties that they have at a more cellular, molecular level that is quite different than that now. Uh, but there is is a place for it. And she really says to make sure you understand that this only really works for plants in their natural environment. It doesn't really work uh, for plants that have been planted or plant all the things that you pick up at, a, at the herb store that are not in their natural environment. Um, but it talks about, you know, paying attention to habitat, looking at whether it's alone or in a group, looking at does this, when you break the stem open, is it a hollow tube? Does sap come out or is it fibrous? Um, what is the shape and the texture of the leaves, the shape of the over all so so eye bright look like an eye and so then it would have been used in olden days so to speak for um for things that have to do with uh, eyes, right? Um, and so on and so forth. What does it taste like? What does it look like? What are the colors? Um, all of that kind of thing. Um, and so while she recognizes that that's got a limited use, um, it's still part of the process of really getting to know a particular plant, especially the plants in your area. Um, she'll just talk a little bit about chi the Chinese system, which is not something that I'm aware of. Um, she gives you sam you know, sandwiches, nastium flower sandwiches, right? Flower salads, um, things that you can go out and pick in your area, um, in the woods, not where they're going to be sprayed with pesticide or, you know, get away from, she even talks about that, where, um, get away, I think it's a she, yeah, um, get away from so many, a thousand, I think a thousand feet from a road because obviously fumes and, um, things like that are going to be on the plants, um, 
she breaks them down into the seasons and what's going to be available. Um, she has a really great astrological, because I do use kind of astrological correspondences for um, seasonal salts and things like that. And so she breaks things down and gives you a really great chart of astrological correspondences. Um, she goes into animal medicine. She goes into, um, you know, the, the balance, uh, putting together a balanced um, mix of herbs and things of that nature. She ends up with a much larger, I'm not... I don't mix. She can she can end up with like eighteen herb blends, and I'm a much more of a pick those key things that you're trying to do. But it is really interesting, and you can learn a lot about the scientific name, the thermal pro, um, properties, um, how it might apply to a particular situation. So that can be very helpful as well. Um, and then, of course, a lot of, of bibliography and things. So what I love about this is that it really does combine all of them, plants for healing, spirituality, and magic. Like it's, it does, she doesn't separate those two things. This is a little bit, I would say, more on the shamanic side. She's definitely done a lot of work with um, Native uh, American groups and she does actually list them out. I think mostly with the Anishinaabe which are, would have been up certainly in my area. My family connection is with Ojibwe which is in one of the Anishinaabe um, nation groups. Um, so she you know, gives that, that focus of where she would be pulling from. It's the the um, animal spirit medicines are really interesting um, there as well. So this leans a little bit towards the shamanic, um, but it, again, is a blend of what is in the world around you. Um, because if there are plants and things in your world that you live in, your land that your feet are on, um, those plants are going to um, have a higher impact on you than me here in the northern um, uh, part of the United States uh, working with uh, a plant from Australia, right? That might have much more um, connection, especially energetically. Doesn't mean that you can't work with other things, because I certainly do, but that it, what is in the world around you and starting there, I think is, is so key. And she really um, does a great job of that. So those are, these are probably the four yeah, these are probably the three I go to the most often. I do go here for correspondences as well. Um, but I, these are the ones that I did want to mention. I know, this is going to be a long video. Um, <laughs> I did want to point out a couple others uh, just really quickly. I really enjoy uh, Tess Whitehurst's uh, The Magic of Trees. This uh, is, I, I, I just really like the way that she writes. Um, I enjoy her um, correspondences and things of that nature for trees. And I just recently picked up, she has another one, The Magic of Flowers. And so uh, I haven't had this one as long, but I really enjoy the way that she writes. And so um, I like uh, having both of these for trees and flowers. And then lastly, there is a whole set of books. Let me try to pick them up. I don't know, even know if this is all that I have. Um, I, you know, my practice, uh, my workings is really, um, a lot of it is based in folklore. And so I, um, Pat, my friend Patrick and I found, I don't remember how, we were doing some d deep dive into plants and we somehow stumbled on one of these books. I don't know which one was the first one. It was one of the wildflower ones. It might have been this wildflower one. These are by Laura Martin. I think they all are. Yeah, by Laura Martin. And these are out of print, So you, but they were really cheap. Like We were able to find them like on Amazon in the used section for not most of them. Now, there's a couple that were a little bit more, but um, these are fantastic because I, again, like to take in the folklore of uh, what is the stories around a particular plant. That does tell us something. Um, and so this has the common name, family, species, species, a description of the plant, the habitat, when it blooms, um, and then it will give some of the folklore surrounding um, a particular uh, 
flower or plant or an animal. So I have the wildflower folklore, the folklore of birds, wildlife folklore, the garden flower folklore, the folklore of trees and shrubs, and southern wildflowers because that's something that she had. Um, I love these books and um, yeah these are definitely not books that I would ever get rid of. I would always make a space for them because in my practice the folklore and the tales surrounding things inform the way that they were used in physical ways for health and also inform the ways that they were used in uh, energetic workings and things of that nature. So um, again there's not a, a line for me between between those areas. So I have had information scattered. I've tried several different things. I've tried to do pretty, prettier ones that looked more, you know, like really cool, magical looking or really, you know, I, I've tried a lot of ways to keep my correspondences. I have lots of notes um, from back when I was typing them up on a word processor, things like that. I just, as with anything, I just tend to have things scattered all over the place. And I really wanted to pull things together, at least in the things that I have in my cabinet. Um, and so, so yesterday I said, okay, I'm, I'm done with trying to do it in a prettier way and let's go practical here because I, I need some practicality. So I went to, for us, it's um, Office Max. Uh, similar in the UK to Staples uh, has these disc binding systems. Uh, Office Max has a disc binding system. Um, you can get disc binding systems. There's another big one in Europe, but I can't remember the name of it. Um, but it's basically like a binder, but the benefit is, is that you can flip it all around so that it's almost like a spiral notebook and a binder combined, but I can still move the pages around like a binder. I, I'm a big fan of the disc binding system. I use it for all kinds of stuff. So I went and picked up one uh, at the store, and then I went and put together a uh, sheet, some, some sheets uh, of everything that I want so I could just check things off uh, and put all of this, pulled all of this together. I still have some transferring of information, but I thought I'd show you really quick how um, I would organize this. I bought one of these because sticky notes are very important when you're concocting. So I called it my Materia Medica, uh, which is my compilation of herbal lore, right? Um, this is just sort of a to-do thing that I have to do. This particular book came with a set of blank calendar pages, which I think I'll probably put in the, um, you know, for the, the months that are left in the year or just a couple months ahead, put in some of the things like the new moons and full moons and important um, astrological shiftings um, that, that would relate to workings and things like that. So I have mine broken down into three sections, uh, essential oils, just between botanicals in general, and then blends and recipes. So that's how I have mine. Um, I made quite a few of like logs um, that just are kind of quick glances. So for example, and I haven't finished these, like I have a lot of roller boil roller boils, roller balls of essential oil. So I love this size. I think this is a 10 milliliter. I think this is a 10 or 15 milliliter, I'll have to look it up. Um, I have a huge box of these, right? And so I'll stick, uh, I generally use uh, coconut oil uh, for carrier, but there's lots of different, again, this is not a lesson on essential oils. So it's got a carrier oil in it, and then I'll stick a label on it. This has 20 drops of frankincense in it. Um, and so this is great for skin, or I'm using it right now for some skins, uh, issues and things of that nature. Um, so, um, if I've done something like that, I've really quickly put put it in there. So I like I have a roller ball for cuts, bites, and sores that has frankincense and clove in it. Um, and so I've just kind of listed out some of the things that I have that I'm going to quick grab to by their symptoms. So like, okay, well, um, heartburn, or I have a migraine. Peppermint and lavender is amazing for migraines. Um, so that kind of thing there. Um, I also have a listing, uh, a log of my essential oils. I had to get rid of my wild orange because it expired. 
orange is one of the ones that expires relatively quickly, I believe in six months. But anyways, um, I also do a lot of work with essential oil based on the aromatherapy note. So each oil, and some of it mix, like there's top to middle for bergamot or camphor is a middle note. Some are more solid, some like cinnamon you can use in a lot of the different notes. So that's something I like to reference a lot. So I, you know, list of the herbs that I have, or the essential oils that I have and their notes. And I have another to keep going there because that's just a way that I look things up. And so I wanted to have that there. So then I made, I put this together based on looking at a lot of different sheets and what people have, uh, what they use for properties. Uh, eventually I would probably uh, edit this down now that I've gone through all my essential oils. Um, some of them don't really show up and I could probably get rid of and condense that area. I mean, give myself more room, but I've already printed up a bunch of these sheets, so I'm just going to use it as it is for now. Um, so, zoom in here a little bit more and I'll put um, I'll put this in my handouts page um, if you want to use it that's fine um, it's just got a place for the herb name for the botanical name um, for the type this I probably need to tweak a little bit too because I had a couple times where I had to write it in like I do use flower essences and so that could have been added in here um, again, you know, as you work with something, you know what you want to change. Um, some quick facts, a family that it's part of, the part that's used, the country that it's from, uh, the blending note, if it's an oil, the color, which for me is more important with the er loose leaf herbs, um, the aroma, what it smells like, how strong it is, and then if it's one of the ones in Blackthorn's book that gives you that uh, aromatic hit. I've, I've put that down there as well. What are the sort of medicinal properties like anti-anxiety, antibacterial, antidepressant, this is an expectorant, this is a sedative, is it a stimulant, those kinds of things. So I can just check them off. This was actually a really light gray, but when I had them printed up at Office Max, they came out really dark, which was disappointing, but you know, I made a bunch of them, so I'm going to use it. Um, I have a section for some that aren't going to be listed there. Um, and then I have a space for uses. This is where I would like to reduce this so I could get a bigger space for uses. You know, But I broke that down into emotional, physical, spiritual, and magical uses. Um, notes, so I put in whether something is phototoxic, like uh, bergamot is not safe for children under six. Um, notes about the, the Sunday and the sunstone. Um, a space to either stick a picture with my little printer uh, or um, to do a sketch of the plant eventually. Um, and then at the bottom here, I can't even move this any further, uh, but at the bottom here are for correspondences. So I have the, the elements, masculine, feminine, the planets, and the signs. And I have that at the bottom so that I can skim. So sometimes I'm looking for something specifically to do with the sun or the moon or Taurus or Leo um, or Venus. And so I can literally kind of flip through this bottom and look for those things that I'm looking for. I did end up writing on the side because it's just a lot easier to go in and see the, 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 the name. Um, so yeah, this is, I, I guess kind of sat down and worked this up uh, again based off of a couple different things. I just Google search like a botanical um, reference sheet or something like that and hit images and you'll find various ones um, and just kind of put in what, what I thought would be helpful to me. And so I have gone through all of my essential oils and those are all in here. Um, some, some I have to go in and fill out where I've gone through all the books that I had. Um, I still haven't gone through some of my notes and I just kind of keep adding that in. I also put a couple pages of blank paper for notes that I might want to write and a couple of the blank sheets for obviously more essential oils that I get. So that's the essential oil section. One thing that's not in here, I think I have it back in the back that I use a lot, is for essential oils. And again, you can find this everywhere. I have it written in all any of my books, 
but the dilution guidelines are so important uh, with using essential oil by the percentages um, and when you would use those particular percentual percentages. You can find this uh, everywhere. This particular one was Olardi's, L-A-R-D-Y-S, um, essential oil, but there, it's the same one that I have written in all my books. So I've got that to reference uh, quickly in the back and then some like plant parts, medical terminology. So like if, if you're over here and it says, um, for example, that it is an anagelistic, well, what is, if you don't know what that is, you can look it up and see, okay, that's to relieve pain. So uh, just some terminology there um, that is, I think, helpful to have uh, at your disposal. Um, you know, if something is a purgative, what is that? So that's just kind of helpful as a reference and different types, different ways in which you can prepare. Um, and again, the different plant parts for the herb, herb part. So I jumped ahead. Anyway, so that's that. So the, this, the next section is really similar. It just lists all of the loose leaf herbs that I have. So all of my herbs I keep in these spice jars um, and I tend to stick a label on them. And on the label itself uh, has sort of the key correspondences and any uh, astrological correspondences that I might be aware of or work with on that. So I keep it on the jar itself. That to me is really important because I, ha I do have a quite a few herbs. I try to keep my things down and I'm going to talk about that in a minute, but um, cause I like to really get to know and work with a particular herb. And, but you know, over time you do build up quite a bit. Um, and I do like to, if I'm doing sort of an intention setting or something like that, I do like to be able to just kind of sort through my herbs in the jars and be able to see the basic information, especially if it's a newer one, right? Because at one time these were newer ones I was working with. And so having that information there lets me sort of grab and pick as uh, smell and feel and all that all at one space without getting going back into my book. So I do like to keep it right on there. So I have uh, a log of the loose leaf herbs that I have. Um, I haven't gone through and put all of the parts that they are, uh, but for example the blackberry that I have are the blackberry leaves. Um, so I might have a different one where it's the roots and so that kind of thing. So I do have the part there. And then the exact same thing. This I have not gone through and entirely filled out. I filled out what I have on the jars and quite a few of them um, have I've already written it all out in the oil section and so I've just written C oil so that I can just go there and get all of that information so quite a few uh, are crossovers between having loose leaf and not but I still need to uh, go through the six section and fill out from all of my different uh, sources but I at least have them all in there Again, I have blank paper and some blank ones for adding in other herbs. I put one little divider in the botanical section because I do make uh, and work with flower essences. Um, if you're used to flower essences, you might have heard of the, of the Bach uh, flower essences. This is an example of one of them, but I have one and I probably pick up a couple more of them, but I like to make them myself. Um, so I have a bunch of, these are mo the mothers, and so I have a bunch of these. Again, I write what they're, uh, what they're good for on it um, and any correspondences that I have on it so that I can just work from my shelf, basically. I, I really enjoy that. Um, but I do have a listing of the ones that I've made and what their usages are. I just made spider wart so I haven't uh, filled that in yet and if there are any astrological correspondences so this is just kind of a listing or log of flower essences right now I didn't find it to be as helpful to do it on one of these because flower essences are really focused on emotional uses so it really is just filling this in and then putting the flower the the usages however it would be helpful to have this stuff on each of the flowers because Again, while you may go on the internet and the internet may say that Daisy is really great about being grounded, about being centered, having peace of mind, if you know, again, the medicinal properties that can help to tell you how an essence might also help you in an energetic way. So I probably will at some point go through and do this for all of those. I just haven't yet. 
Um, and then I have a section for blends, rest, I probably could have just called that recipes. Um, this I have a lot to have to add in, but I did get started. This is a smoking blend. By smoking, I don't necessarily mean smoke it in a pipe, although you can with this one. Um, but that also might be burning it on this, which again, I'll talk about in a second. So I made this sort of recipe card up for me, which has what's kind of the, what is the herbal blend. Um, I do have whether it's sort of magical or physical, but it's usually is always both, right? Um, the ingredients and maybe what why I put that in there. So say for this smoking blend, um, I also have the sort of a pie chart because when I'm doing blends um, and things, I do like to look at ratios and percentages and things of that nature. So that pie chart, you'll often see that in them as well as some triangle charts. But um, I just put a circle there so that I could break it down. So for example, for a smoking blend, you you know half of it may be a base like um, Domena. I know I'm not saying that correctly, but that's a great smoking base. Um, and so that percentage is base. And then it's the, what's left, right? We have um, the flavor of it. We have body. And then I have a property, a particular property. So I'm adding this herb in, not so much for a use, but for an actual property that it gives. So this is mugwort is sedating and relaxing. It also brings on uh, dreams. And so that would be a property that I'm adding into the flavor of peppermint, which also can have uh, properties as well. But this is why I've added those in, what the uses might be and any instructions. So for example, with the smoking blend, you want to spritz it with a little bit of honey water if it's gotten too dry. Dry. Um, so that kind of uh, putting that there um, as well. My Kelly's Mojo water, it's a spray. These are the ingredients. Um, it's broken down into an herb. This is based off of Florida water, where a, a large chunk of it might be um, a particular herb. There's a floral note, there's a citrus note, and there's a spice note. And so kind of which, one, which ones I picked, what its uses are, again, instructions or notes. Um, I can sometimes substitute bergamot for helichrysum, and so I've got a note there for that. So that's what these are, and, and some are like Kelly's Mojo Water. I use this for cleansing. It's like Florida, it's my Florida water. I can't have strong florals, so it's my version of Florida water, and I make it all of the time. Uh, but then on the other side, I have flea spray, right? So an essential oil spray for getting rid of fleas. Um, heartburn, swelling, and lymph things. Like there's not a separation between those things. So obviously um, I have some work putting in a lot of my blends. If it's just a quick essential oil blend, you know, then it's just something that I put here. If it's just, I'm putting 15 drops or 20 drops of a particular oil into a carrier for a reason, then I'm not gonna have that over into the recipes. So, you know, everybody, you know, separates those things in the ways it's the most useful. And the point of this book is to be useful. So that's sort of how I have uh, finally sat down and organized things. Um, and I thought that those of us out there that like paper crafting and organization might enjoy that. Woo wee! Um, I want to kind of just let's stop, right? Because there's got to be a place to stop. I think I've really hit on everything um, that I that I my intention was to hit. But one of my recommendations are if you're new to working with anything uh, like plants or oils um, or whatever it is that you want to do, start with a, 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 a single herb or a small number of herbs and really work with those intentionally for a while. You know, don't go out and try to build an entire cabinetry of things. Work with, uh, pick them out. Like these were herbs, I think these were, I, I'm pretty sure, these were ones that I had originally, and again, I've worked with a lot of these my whole life, but when I was starting to go about trying to do it intentional, there were a certain set of herbs that I sat and worked with for a long time, and I didn't work with any other ones, and I still use them constantly. So rosemary, for me, these are just ones I know that, that were some of the original ones. Yarrow, blackberry, and I still, these are ones I probably use the most. Dandelion, uh, cloves, um, uh, peppermint, I use 
essential oil and loose leaf for everything. I have bad sinuses. Um, it's very uplifting. It just it's an herb and an oil that I, I use constantly. Um, cinnamon, same thing. Use it constantly. So maybe these were the first you know chunk, and I just really put together different blends, worked with them in different ways, researched them, drew them, you know, all of that kind of thing and really get to know working with these a certain number of herbs and getting really comfortable. And then when you add them in, add them in intentionally. Um, and so, okay, well, I'm, I need to bring in, I've got all of this type, maybe I want to bring in a warmer herb. So I'm going to pull in, you know, cinnamon or frankincense or something like that. Um, or I need a particular note when it gets to essential oils. The same thing goes with essential oils. These are ones I use all the time. Peppermint, cinnamon, uh, some type of orange or tangerine, uh, tea tree oil I go through by the buckets. Um, those are oranges, lavender. Like if you're going to start with one essential oil, I would start with lavender. Um, it is, I don't particularly recommend this um, version of this brand of it. Sorry about my dog. Uh, my point is, is the brand that you get, this is not a, this is not a video, intention of this video is not to go into essential oils or herbs or sourcing. That's a whole, those are whole other topics. Um, sometimes it's what you can get. For me, this Now brand is something that I can get locally. Um, and so it's something I can, if I need something, I can run down to the health food store and grab a hold of it uh, pretty easily. So um, that's a whole another conversation. But, um, you know, I would say, for me personally, if you were to start with two oils, maybe three oils, I would be starting with peppermint, lavender, and tea tree. But, but lavender, again, not this brand. I have to get a, another bottle. But um, lavender is... It's a floral scent, which I normally can't work with a lot of floral scents. You'll see a lot of citrus uh, and a lot of um, deeper notes and things like that because I... Uh, floral notes can give me migraines like I can't really work with pure like rose oil or something like that um, so you'll see a lot of citrus and things like that but lavender is one that I would not give up because there's so many uses for it so you know I have lavender in a spray if you get burnt lavender spray is amazing um, lavender is just good for everything so um, that would be an essential oil that I would certainly recommend starting with um, but you can you know, make them into sprays. Again, you put them in and roll them on. Uh, so this is great for cuts or skin problems and things like that. Or teach your oil might be for acne or dental. Cloves, great for dental. There's different things depending on how you're going to use it, right? Um, so... Um, in terms of, of herbal blends, again, teas. I have a book that Kelly Bear recommended that I'm going to get for teas. Um, you can use them for tea, in teas for their health benefit. Um, but I also use herbs a lot in like salt mixtures. So I do seasonal salt mixtures for Patrick and I um, that has essential oils and it has herbs and it has different things like that for different properties in that and salts or sugars you can do. Um, this, uh, the lovely Jamie um, said me this I can't burn incense or things like that um, so she sent me this and it has a screen on the top of it this is really was a game changer for me I did a lot of different ways of burning herbs loose herbs versus incense but this is the best thing on the planet earth um, it, you just put a little tea light in it and you just sprinkle the herbs on it um, and you know and just it just heats it that way and that is you know my go-to you know so I might take a little peppermint and put some peppermint on there I might put some blackberry because I use a lot of blackberry um, whatever the herbs that I want to put and then I burn it uh, and that is just a game changer for me because again I can't use incense um, a diffuser for essential oil. I mean, have a diffuser in every room. <laughs> um, so, and then it's, uh, water essence, flower essences are something I've worked with in the last year or so, and I love them. For me, these feel like crystals, ephemeral crystals. It's got a similar energy for me as crystals, but it is much more ephemeral and much softer. Well, not that crystals aren't softer, but you know, crystals take forever to grow in the earth. Flowers are grow and sometimes the very next day or in a couple hours they've passed on. Um, and 
you generally see um, flower essences used in more of emotional support sense. So there's just so many different ways that you can work with um, herbs and oils and things of that nature. Um, Again, if it's, if it's something that interests you, um, start small. Get a couple herbs that maybe are in your area and really work with those for a long time. Research them, use them, um, do all of the kinds of things and get to know them and then move on to the to the next couple, right? Um, I, I have a ton, well, I don't feel like I have, I have a lot. I think I have like 25 or so essential oils. I don't use all of those, but most of them have been used or purchased for a specific reason. I needed a specific note, but I've been using them for a long time. Um, some just for diffusing, like this brand I think is more just for diffusing, even though I think it's 100% pure. But you do need to be careful if you're going to be putting it on your skin or anything like that. You know, again, you, this is not this is not teaching you how to use essential oils. Go learn, do your proper research, don't inhale put something on your skin, put something underneath your tongue, burn it, <laughs> whatever, drink it. Don't, don't put things in or on your body without doing proper research. Uh, it is your responsibility to be the gatekeeper to your body and how it interacts with the physical world. And that is for, you know, herbal things as well as for, again, I think we should be responsible when a doctor gives us a prescription we should be doing the same thing, right? We're responsible for what we put in our body. Um, so make sure that you do your due diligence. So I'm going to stop talking because this is already way, oh, I don't know why. Why should I think it's going to be shorter? But um, I hope that this has been, uh, this has been a big requested uh, video for a long time. It just made sense to do it after um, having walked through the Herb Crafter. I, maybe you can see why I'm so excited about this deck after this video. Um, and then finally sitting down to try to get organized and giving up on it being pretty I mean I think it's pretty but giving it up on it trying to make it look uh, a certain way and just having the information at my fingertips so it was just kind of a confluence of things that um, made this a good timing to make this video so hope you enjoyed it and I wish you a wonderful day